Hi, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile out of Boulder, Colorado. Today I'm going to be installing the quick drain shower line drain assembly. This is their PVC drain. I'm going to be installing it here against the wall. I'll be using the fiberglass reinforced panels in place of the subfloor to give me my slope towards the wall. I've got an 80 inch length here. The largest drain they make is 72 inches. So I'm connecting two drains together. Each will have its own individual P-trap and run out for the rest of the plumbing. So um, this, this, all of this will be removed. This will replace the subfloor in order for me to give my, get my slope. So I framed a box here for the drain to set in. Uh, you want your drain to go all the way up against the framing <clears throat> to, your, um, to your exterior wall or to your outside wall here. Um, I've left a three inch gap here for the drain to fit into. You're going to want a little, little wiggle room so you can make sure that you have it straight to the wall, but not too much because there's screws that go through this outside lip that screw it down to the subfloor and through your fiberglass reinforced panel. I've made it pretty tight to the ends so that I have the ends of my drain supported to carry on the, um, the extensions that are going on the end, which will also be on top of the fiberglass reinforced panel. So I have my drains in place. I have my plumbing all hooked up. Um, I use the rubber no-hub coupling um, it offers me a little bit of wiggle room here to make sure that I have things straight. The reinforced fiberglass panels that go on here go underneath the drains um, for your waterproofing and water integrity. So I'm going to start cutting those panels and putting them in place. I'm going to remove these boards because they're proud to the floor joists and uh, show you how they go together. So the panels are made to run perpendicular to your floor joists and they're tongue and groove. You can see there's a lip on this one that this one fits down into. It goes underneath your drain. There are grooves cut into these panels which are the indicators where you put you where you're just going to screw through. They go in that distance. I find it helps an awful lot to pre-drill the holes before you run those screws down, you have a real hard time tapping through these, um, through these panels. So I'm just going to go down the line. When I'm finished, when I'm finished with all the panels, I'm hoping I'm going to have a piece that's left over that I can put on the back side of the drain. Then the drain screws down to the studs through the panels, panels screw to the joists on the subfloor. The panels come one foot by six foot long. So theoretically you could do a six foot shower with a single panel. Um, because my joists are going this way, I'm getting two of these pieces per six foot length. So first I measured my distance from the wall to my drain to make sure that I'm straight going all the way across and screwed the drain down to this and to the box that I made in the back. And it's screwed down, it's not going anywhere. I had to pre-drill the holes also to get through the reinforced fiberglass. Then I went and I pre-drilled all of my holes for the, the screws. They furnish you with these screws. I'll warn you, they take a square tip for your um, driver. Um, and uh, they don't tap through the fiberglass very well. It's so much easier just to go down the line, pre-drill all your holes and put that in. Next, I'm going to hang my drywall, and then I'll pour the pan. So I have my backer in place, um, and I'm only going this far up so that I can get my mud base down on here and, um, <clears throat> and finish this today. I can always do the, the rest of it later. As so often that happens with remodel projects, in putting this drain all the way as far to the wall as I could, I still end up with about an inch and a half here between wall and um, where the drain cover is going to go. So I'm going to end up putting a small piece of tile in here 
uh, inch and a half, something like that, before I set my tile. When I set the floor, I'll put either some of the floor tile or maybe even the wall tile. It's all going to disappear. It's not a big deal. So I also wanted to say before you do your mud base in here, um, you want to pull this clamping collar off. Leave all of your green protective uh, covers, plastic covers on here, and you're going to screed from the top of the drain over to your subfloor. I'm going to put a, a piece of quarter inch back or where my uh, where the shower is going to end and screed to that, knowing that I'm putting a quarter inch backer board all over the floor. That's the height of the tile as it continues across. So I've checked the pan. I've made sure everything is smooth. If there were any bumps or high spots, I've scraped those off. I'm ready for waterproofing in here now. I'm going to pull back the green protective layer that's on the outside of the drain, leave this to the inside. I like to use the Mop K Aqua Defense. I put it on with a foam roller. I'm going to cover the, the pan and the corners with the roller, the fiber tape that comes with the package. If you're doing the liquid waterproofing, comes with a fiber tape. I'm going to fold and tape all of my corners. It also comes with inside and outside corners, depending on what you're using. After I get my Aqua Defense on in one layer, I'll put the corners in, tape all of my edges, tape this seam, tape any other seams that you may have in your pan, and um, let all that dry completely and then come back with a second coat over your tape and over the entire pan and you'll have all of your waterproofing done. There are also little pins that stick up out of these this drain that are the locators for the clamping, the stainless clamping bar that goes on top. And you will cut your fingers when you're taping. Be sure to push the tape down over these pins so that they protrude through so that you can locate your drain cover in the proper position. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see the holes because you've already covered them up with all of your waterproofing agent. So I have two coats of uh, Aqua Defense liquid waterproofing on here. I have all of my um, drain cover locator stubs available here for when I do put the drain cover on. This is all ready for tile. When I get to that point, if the drywall is all finished in here and everything, I'll put the clamping cover on, tile right up to that. I'll show you how the pieces go on the top of that. and. Um, it's all ready to go. It was one day for all of the installation of the drain, the slope, um, and then the second day I was able to um, put one coat on first thing in the morning, it was dry by the afternoon, <clears throat> put the second coat on. Because this is two drains that I hooked together, there is a special connector that goes in between the two. They come in a two inch and a four inch length. Um, you need to specify with Quick Drain if this is the length that you're going to, that you're going to need this special connect drain connector also. <clears throat> so I have the clamping bar in place. I've used the locators that came up from the drain to get this in place and I have it screwed down. These are the drain extensions. They're four inches long. You cut them down into, into the correct length. I use this um, modified polyurethane sealant that's available also with Quick Drain. Generous bead on there. Screw into place. 
And then these rails will go on here and go across the drain also. These are, you can raise or lower them. Your tile is gonna set right up against it so that um, it acts like a Schluter and your drain cover is gonna fit in the middle of these. <clears throat> so as I said before, because of my framing, I wasn't able to get the drain as close to the wall as I would have liked. Um, and if you find that to be the case with the drain that you're installing, you're better off to leave it a little bit away from the wall so that you have, so that you can fit a piece of tile here. You can give it a good slope. Um, it, it really works out nicely rather than being so perfect to have this tile come right exactly to where your metal edging is. So uh, this is the finished product. The two drains go over 80 inches and um, it's a beautiful installation.